Hello everyone, uh, Thomas Weims here from Santa Barbara Nutrients. Um, it's a, a really great pleasure um, today um, to sit down with Dr. Shigeo Hori um, from uh, Juntendo University in Japan. Um, so Dr. Hori and I we have been uh, working together for over a year now um, to uh, put together a clinical trial um, that we'll talk about. Um, so it's been a, a fantastic uh, pleasure to work um, with Dr. Hori and his um, amazing team. Um, to get this all up and running um, and uh, we're nearly there um, so we'll we'll dig into this um, but first um, uh, welcome um, Shigeo and um, it's uh, great to talk with you and I wonder if you could tell us um, just real quick um, you know about your department and what your role is um, and you know what um, what you normally do you know all day long <laughs> in your department. Well, well thank you Thomas for inviting me for this uh, wonderful opportunity and uh, I'm a urologist, and you may think that, uh, you know, uh, AD, PKD patient will be seen mainly by nephrologists. Uh, I myself has been a urologist for more than 30 years, and uh, I do uh, surgery as a urologist, of course, but uh, since I had the opportunity to do a clinical and uh, uh, research fellowship in nephrology, I'm more than 35 years ago in Dallas, Texas. So uh, I'm a kind of uh, grandfather uh, to see the patient with ADPKD and also do research on ADPKD. So that's why I've been interested in and I'm most excited with the um, ADPKD uh, for the last 30 years. So that's why I'm involved in uh, uh, research and, uh, you know, uh, clinical activities in ADPKD, and I had a very good opportunity to get known with uh, Dr. Wimes. So uh, that's why I, I think I'm here, and I also mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being very excited about this. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> um, how many, I'm just curious, how many PKD patients um, do you have at yes. Juntendo University? How many yeah. do you see yourself? And do you, I'm, I'm sure you have many other doctors that see PKD patients as well. Right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, in our program, we have close to 1,000 uh, PKD patients, uh, which hmm. is probably uh, one of the largest uh, program in Japan and probably in Asia. So let me just briefly introduce uh, my university, uh, Juntendo University, is mm -hmm. the, uh, one of the oldest uh, medical school in Japan. And traditionally, uh, Japanese medicine, uh, more than 100 years ago, uh, was based on oriental medicine, so Chinese herb medicine. Uh, but Juntendo mm -hmm. was one of the first to introduce Western medicine. And so uh, I think it's more than 100, across 190 years old uh, history, about 190 years. And the currently that the Juntendo University is one of the largest uh, university hospital group in Japan. We have six university hospitals. So it's like a University of California system, but it's a private uh, system. <laughs> So, uh, and in our department, since I'm a kind of grandfather, so in our urology, urology department, uh, we have uh, ADPKD clinic, and uh, uh, we have uh, five doctors. Uh, so four faculties and one graduate student is now seeing uh, ADPKD uh, patients. And also we do have a, a nutrition and also researching us uh, in our program. Wow, excellent. Um, so um, close to a thousand patients with PKD, that's, um, that's amazing. That's um, um, a very, very large group. And uh, where do they mostly come from? Are they mostly from the, the patients from the Tokyo area or are they from all over Japan? How, how does that work for you? Uh, yes, mainly uh, patients are referred from the, uh, Tokyo and also uh, the, um, in the vicinity of, you know, metropolitan area. But of course, uh, so many patients uh, make a contact with, from all over Japan. And mm -hmm. some of them we do kind of telemedicine. Uh, so, or to work with the local doctors, and uh, mm -hmm. so we can regularly check the uh, status, and uh, we give advice to local doctors. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, 
so there's something special about you, um, which is you know, somewhat unusual amongst um, <clears throat> um, doctors um, working with uh, PKD patients, and that is um, that you're also very interested in ketogenic metabolic therapies. Um, and you already have um, you know, done a lot of work in, in that direction. So I'm wondering, how did you become interested in ketogenic metabolic therapies? Yes. So uh, one thing is that my kind of my gut feeling, uh, probably as a urologist, I have to see many uh, cancer patients, actually. And uh, of course, uh, in my urology clinic, the largest number of group is uh, prostate cancer. And uh, when I graduated from medical school about, uh, you know, 35 years ago, prostate cancer was very rare among Japanese. And even, uh, you know, some professors mentioned that uh, prostate cancer is, uh, you know, genetically, uh, it's very rare among Japanese, which was mm -hmm. totally wrong because after 35 years, prostate cancer is, is a, uh, one of the, you know, most prevalent cancer among Japanese male. So what is the reason for this drastical change? And uh, so I have been interested in nutrition since for the last uh, like 50 years. Uh, Japanese diet has, you know, uh, changed a lot. Uh, people may think that, you know, uh, Japanese uh, food uh, is very, you know, uh, healthy food or something like that. But uh, for the last 50 years, uh, used to be we eat a lot of fish, but now, you know, amount of fish uh, uh, is, uh, con <coughs> we, we don't consume much, uh, we don't eat much fish, more shifted towards, you know, m meat. And also, we uh, began to take, uh, you know, more uh, fat, and uh, so uh, our content over that is, you know, change, which you can say it's westernized, uh, but uh, the same uh, phenomena occurs in, uh, you know, other Asian countries too. So mm -hmm. prostate cancer is a very unique cancer, which metabolizes, you know, uh, fat mainly because prostate is an organ uh, who intakes uh, fat uh, or cholesterol into the, into the organ, prostate. So uh, mm -hmm. cholesterol uh, concentration is highest uh, in prostate uh, compared to as other organ, which is very unique. So uh, to prevent, uh, so I'm, I'm interested in the prevention of the prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that, uh, for example, soy isoflavone uh, is very effective uh, to prevent uh, prostate cancer. So that's why I've been interested in uh, nutrition and also uh, by uh, uh, going after many researches and uh, nowadays, you know, uh, microbiome. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, when and how to take your meal is most important uh, to, you know, the, not only the prevention, but also treatment for many, many diseases. So mm -hmm. I think you know, if you take a look at a uh, very uh, top one scientific journal, uh, no issue uh, you can see to include something about fasting or, you know, microbiome. And that's why I had the opportunity to encounter with uh, uh, Thomas, uh, Dr. Wayne, you know. So I'm amazed uh, with the, uh, uh, although it's a basic research, but, uh, you know, Dr. Wyme's research, uh, I'm actually stunned uh, since uh, I've been doing this uh, uh, research of ADPKD for a long time. I have made uh, like a no cut mice uh, to mm -hmm. study how ADPKD or uh, the uh, gene of uh, PKD1 and 2 uh, might change the uh, uh, molecular, uh, you know, pathology of ADPKD, but uh, we don't have uh, aspects of nutrition uh, for the research mm -hmm. of ADPKD. So uh, I'm, I'm really, really uh, actually that it's uh, mm, how to say uh, it's quite it's quite uh, surprising. 
uh, to see that uh, nutrition actually can have a great mm -hmm. impact on the outcome, right. uh, potential outcome on the uh, mm -hmm. ADPKD patients' uh, renal functions. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I didn't actually know that you came from the um, prostate cancer yes. angle and found, and that there's such a dramatic difference mm -hmm. in the, um, the uh, in prostate cancer mm -hmm. over the you know last 50 years in Japan, yes. um, coinciding with dietary mm -hmm. changes. That is actually really interesting, yes. um, and sounds very similar, um, of course, to what is happening in ADPKD. Mm -hmm. You know, where normally one would think it's a genetic disease, you know, mm -hmm. nothing would change the outcome, yes. uh, but that is, I think, very much not right. true. Um, the outcomes are mm -hmm. um, very strongly um, mm -hmm. affected by, by diet and lifestyle. Um, wonderful. And um, I, um, so I, I know um, you have also, you have a particular interest in, uh, interest in fasting as a, mm -hmm. as a therapy and, mm -hmm. um, I believe you use it um, with, with yes. patients. Um, I wonder mm. if you could tell us something about that. Yes. So uh, fasting itself is not very new uh, to humanize, of course. Uh, so mm. if you go back to the history, uh, you know, more than probably like uh, 3,000 years ago in a Chinese classic, there's a very good description of fasting. So. It said that uh, people who eat meat is brave, and the people who eat uh, cereals, cereals uh, are wise. But people who can stop eating for a while, it's a fasting, uh, mm -hmm. would, be, would enjoy longevity and uh, you know, uh, healthy life. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a 3,000 years ago, but Chinese classic uh, clearly mentioned about the benefit of fasting and uh, mm. you know of course uh, any uh, religion can include activity of uh, fasting so mm. but of course uh, in the Japanese uh, it's a Buddhism and the Buddhist uh, has to do uh, in their training uh, has to do fasting for a certain amount of time but our conception was that uh, uh, fasting is very uh, uh, very, you know, tough. Uh, it's a perseverance, so that's why it's a part of the monk's training. Uh, but mm. uh, so I'm, I was interested in uh, fasting, and uh, at the time I was kind of obese a little bit, and probably if I continue to this uh, lifestyle, I will develop diabetes maybe ten years later. So. I decided to do fasting in a fasting institute in uh, uh, Europe and uh, noticed that uh, after fasting, you know, not only losing weight, but also I'm very, uh, how to say, uh, can't have a focus on anything and also a sense mm -hmm. of uh, rejuvenation. So I feel mm -hmm. like uh, I'm now uh, 62 years old, but uh, after the fasting, I felt like I'm 40 something. So it's amazing. So I, mm -hmm. you know, uh, try to dig in, uh, you know, what what would be uh, behind uh, the fasting. And uh, of course, uh, I've known that the fasting have a multiple health benefit, benefit not only uh, uh, losing weight, but also to prevention for dementia or. Uh, mainly for prevention of cancer and many things. Yeah. Mm. So uh, since so I've been interested in fasting. Uh, it, probably I think it's uh, uh, at the extension of uh, you know uh, microbiome. My interest in the microbiome and to change microbiome. I think fasting is very uh, I think mm -hmm. effective. So. I think that's my, yeah, uh, that's why I'm so interested in fasting. Wonderful, yeah. So how, how easy do you find it um, if you have a patient in your office and mm -hmm. you tell them you should do fasting, mm -hmm. can they do it um, or do they need um, some kind of a tight uh, supervision or help from dietitians? Um, right. how, how does that work, work for you in practice? Yes. And uh, also, uh, we, as a urologist, uh, of course, I see a lot of patients with cancers or urinary dysfunction, but also 
a patient with the uh, uh, deficiency of testosterone. So nowadays, it's a kind of fashion uh, to injection or put a gel of testosterone if you are, you know, uh, depressed and uh, with the uh, low testosterone level. But I think, you know, uh, to make a supplement is a quick fix. Uh, but mm. to change your uh, metabolisms, I think you, you have to do something. Not only, you know, injection, to do injection from the outside, but I, I, mm. I, I wonder if there's any way to change yourself. And I noticed that the uh, uh, microbiome plays a very important role for the secretion of testosterone, actually. So there's a very famous experiment uh, published in science a few years ago, uh, which actually is not meant to demonstrate that the uh, microbiome is important for the regulation of testosterone secretion. But one figure clearly showed that uh, uh, if you uh, keep mice aseptic from bath, uh, you, know, male, uh, you know, male mice and female mice have the same testosterone level in an aseptic mm -hmm. condition. Mm -hmm. uh, but, of course, if you keep them in a more usual condition, uh, testosterone level, of course, male mice is higher than female mice. So why is the difference? So only the difference is the microbiome, probably. Mm -hmm. So uh, I ask, I, I ask uh, my patient with low testosterone level, and uh, so why don't you do, for example, intermittent fasting? Right. And it's actually doing well, they're doing well. So, and also testosterone level, uh, uh, not everybody, but uh, it's uh, quite effective. Mm -hmm. So uh, I usually, a patient, uh, any, any patient who have some problem, a metabolic problem, and I suggest fasting, but starting with like uh, 16 hours, fasting, in mm -hmm. other words, to mm -hmm. skip your breakfast. Mm -hmm. And uh, also probably uh, you can uh, drink coffee with uh, MCT oil uh, or, you know, even butter. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, that's very good to not to feel hungry. So 16 mm -hmm. hours fasting is uh, very effective. And uh, okay. plus uh, probably you can do like uh, 48 hours fasting or 36 hours fasting to boost uh, your uh, ket ketone level in your blood. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. I think 6 hours fasting is a very good uh, option. And uh, to do that, most of the case, you don't need nutrition. Just to do 16 hours uh, fasting, right. just skip one meal. So you don't need nutrition to make a concert. But uh, with uh, something, for example, to add uh, a ketone body, uh, of course, the nutrition is uh, essential to, uh, to make an introduction to patients. Mm. Wonderful. <clears throat> That's um, excellent. And um, well, let's talk about um, the clinical trial um, mm -hmm. where um, you know you you you're doing in in, in Tokyo, um, and you know we're, we're planning it together and so mm -hmm. on. And uh, just for um, the viewers that may not know the background, um, so we have been um, working here in the U.S. Um, with a group of uh, really fantastic uh, renal dietitians uh, led by Jessiana Saville. Um, and created the um, <clears throat> uh, the program uh, called Renew for Renal Nutrition, um, which has been up and running for close to two years now, I think. Um, and uh, over 150 patients with uh, PKD have gone through the program. Uh, I would say with you know fantastic success. Uh, most of them, uh, most of them report um, you know um, great uh, benefits um, to their health and well-being. Um, even uh, improvement in kidney function and so on, and um, the um, so actually when Dr. Hori and I met uh, about a year ago in uh, at a PKD conference, um, that was uh, really amazing. And he just came to me and said, "Hey, um, I would like to do a clinical trial uh, with you, you know, using the program." Um, so. Um, that's how it all started. Uh, thank you very much <laughs> for for saying that. Um, and it's been just fantastic to get this all um, uh, planned and up and running. Uh, and of course, it's different. Um, the the renew program is currently in English. Um, you know, meant for the uh, for American patients. You know, using ingredients and dishes that people know. 
Japan is different. You know, there are different cu um, cultural, um, you know, culinary um, customs and so on, different ingredients. Um, so, but anyway, I think we have come a really long way uh, to get this all done. And I wonder if you could uh, maybe tell us um, about what the trial um, will look like, you know, how many patients there are, what the intervention uh, is, uh, how long the intervention will be, and so on. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, so it's almost two years uh, uh, that uh, I went over to Lisbon. It's a fast meeting, Federation of American right. Society of Experimental Biology meeting, and uh, so Thomas was invited as a keynote speaker because uh, his research was uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, how to say, uh, very impressive in the ADPKD research community. So I went over uh, to listen to his lecture and also see him in person. And uh, so uh, to, and also I was told by Thomas about his uh, idea of a clinical trial and I was quite excited. And uh, I made, I, I'm very glad that, uh, uh, you know, Thomas allowed us to join the program. And uh, one of my good friend, uh, best friend, uh, York Pei in uh, Trump General Hospital, and, and I uh, allowed to join the clinical trial. And uh, so idea is uh, the, uh, uh, to change the diet from a carbo, uh, carbohydrate-centered uh, diet to a ketogenic diet. Uh, take more fat instead of carbo. And also, uh, another thing, what, very important thing is uh, to take a citrate. And uh, we've known as a urologist and uh, who treat stone diseases, uh, citrate is important for the prevention of uh, stone diseases. We, we've known that and we prescribe uh, citrate. But uh, we didn't know uh, to prevent the micro uh, calcification inside the uh, kidneys, uh, you know, uh, nephron tubal is important uh, for the uh, progression of the diseases of ADPKD, disease of ADPKD. Uh, so it's very new to us. So uh, it's basically to change the diet from carbo, carbo to fat, uh, ket uh, ketogenic diet and also uh, Ketocitra, which was uh, developed by Thomas and uh, Lenyu Group, uh, it's basically hydroxybutylate, which is a ketone body. In other words, if you own fasting for like uh, more than 16 hours, uh, ketone body will be accumulated, uh, will be uh, uh, circulating in your blood. But to uh, add, uh, to take uh, hydroxybutylate, uh, uh, you, will, you can boost the keto, so more effective than just fasting. And uh, with the citrate, so keto citra, it's actually it's very tasteful and uh, it's a powder, so we put in the water and take it. And uh, it's, you know, uh, tastes good, uh, so you can continue that. So idea is uh, to uh, to under the instruction of nutritionist, nutritionist uh, patient will be enrolled and keep this diet uh, for uh, is that is that ninety 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 days? Uh, it's just uh, right. Yeah. So yeah. the initial right. So the initial training is for yes. uh, three, uh, ninety days. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, yes. Um, and then, um, well, actually, for yeah, and then um, we we would follow, or you would follow the patients for a whole year, um, yes. from the beginning to the end, um, to look at long-term outcomes, mm -hmm. um, which I think that is um, very important. Um, sure. So currently, you mm -hmm. know, we have data more on the short-term side, um, and it would just be you know a proper controlled clinical mm -hmm. trial. I think is really important to yes. show uh, differences in long-term outcomes. Yeah. That is wonderful. Right. Well, yes, and uh, 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 I think uh, last month uh, the clinical trial was approved by our, uh, you know, ethical uh, review board, so mm -hmm. we can start at any time. And uh, we do uh, before and the end of the trial 
we measure uh, body constituent like uh, muscle mass and uh, uh, fatty mass, lean body mass. And also we plan to uh, evaluate the changes of microbiome uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning and the end of the study. And of course we do a lot of as a, you know, blood chemistries and uh, uh, including, uh, of course, renal function and everything, and also the size of the kidney, and also uh, if, if there's any changes for the sizes of the liver cysts. Uh, also. Mm -hmm. So it's very comprehensive analysis. And uh, so on starting this program, uh, so Thomas and Lenu, uh, Jess, uh, sent us uh, two very out, outstanding, very wonderful uh, nutritionists. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we just uh, finished yesterday the one-week program. So our faculty members, uh, professors, and the graduate students, and nutritionists, and the nurses, uh, you know, taught, uh, received lecture uh, from uh, uh, Cherisy and Clarissa, uh, the wonderful nutritionists. Uh, from United States and also from uh, uh, Jakarta, Indonesia. But actually, she graduated from uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had a wonderful time, and we went over. Actually, it's a charity uh, who is uh, uh, Japanese descent, uh, so translate English to Japanese. And uh, so we went over. Uh, I think uh, so. Teaching module is. Uh, like uh, more than 10, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, right. Yes, mm -hmm. and also we did uh, a cooking demonstration, and also we uh, did some search. Uh, it's a good, uh, you know, a food uh, which is uh, good for a ketogenic diet. So they searched uh, the market, a uh, Japanese market, mm -hmm. and as, actually mm -hmm. they invented uh, recipes. Uh, for uh, Japanese people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we noticed that uh, uh, it's quite, uh, so the, our experience with uh, our patient uh, in the cooking demonstration is that uh, we can accept uh, comfortably the ketogenic diet. Uh, so mm -hmm. since uh, still the Japanese diet is quite different from uh, Western people, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. we excited since uh, this would be the first Asian you know, uh, experience with uh, your program, uh, ketogenic mm -hmm. diet. So uh, we had a we had a wonderful one week, and everybody is excited. Mm -hmm. And I truly appreciate uh, since uh, not only for this program, but uh, to by introducing uh, this program, our ADPKD team has a sense of unity. Uh, mm -hmm. solidarity. It's very uh, mm -hmm. unique experience. So, uh, not on, because we have a trabeptan, uh, which is the uh, uh, vasopressin receptor uh, inhibitors, uh, but uh, it will be prescribed by a physician. But this program, for a nutritious program, is actually support, will be supported by not only physician, but also nutritionist and nurse. Uh, and also, a patient can involve because patient need to think about the recipes for a daily, you know, daily meal. Uh, so, patient will be excited, and so I think it's uh, it's quite um, meaningful. And actually, uh, I uh, establish a Japanese uh, association of. ADPKD, a Japanese, uh, yeah, uh, which is like a, a PKD, Japanese foundation of ADPKD, mm -hmm. uh, which is like, uh, you know, a PKD foundation in the United States. And right. uh, I meant to establish this uh, uh, group, uh, not only kind of hierarchical, uh, in other words, uh, you know, traditional parental a parental approach uh, from the physician teaching to patient. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't like that. So my idea mm -hmm. is uh, patient-centered, but patient, physicians, and also a medical team or even uh, farmers, all mm -hmm. on the you know uh, horizontal or in the same uh, position. Right. 
and to right. support uh, ADP, KD patient and family. So mm -hmm. I think this nutritious program, I, I would like to introduce if uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, finish our trial uh, successfully, mm -hmm. uh, we can introduce this program to the uh, uh, probably right. more institution uh, in Japan. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. So let me just recap. Um, so we, we talked about a lot of things. Um, so currently, um, there's actually a team uh, from the Renew program in at, at your institution in Japan. Um, and um, they have been working with your team um, on, uh, you know, kind of establishing the um, the different parameters of the Renew program and, you know, um, teaching your team everything they need to know about it. Um, of course, in, Jap in Japanese, with Japanese new recipes that they have come up with, which was, I think, uh, that was a huge effort. Um, uh, but uh, I think it's really fantastic um, that this all came together. And um, the, the trial is, um, <clears throat> or the Renew program itself, is really a, um, a plant-focused ketogenic diet. So it's not vegan or ve vegetarian. So there's lots of fish in there, and which is probably works really well in Japan. Um, and you know dairy, eggs, and so on, and um, um, the inter um, that's kind of the intervention from a dietary perspective. And uh, in addition to that, um, there's um, keto citra um, that the um, patients will take um, every day, and then the whole trial will be for one year. Um, and you know we're very very curious, of course, um, what the outcomes are, and um, you're going to look at some. Uh, some heart outcomes, you know, kidney function, total kidney volume by MRI scan, and so on, um, which is fantastic. So we will know the answers, you know, in probably uh, maybe almost. You know, it, it will take some time because it's a long, long-term trial. Um, but you're starting. Um, my understanding is you're starting this August already in just a few weeks um, with a, a trial, um, a sort of like a pilot. Um, of the program uh, with something like 10 patients just to go through um, through the three-month training phase. Um, and uh, is that right? That starts in August? Yes, uh, yeah. August, September, yes. Okay, perfect, yeah. And then um, so uh, your team will get, you know, initial hands-on experience with it and then the, the full trial will start mm -hmm. sometime in January or so. Um, and I'm wondering, um, so if patients out there um, in Japan are interested in participating in the trial, um, can they get in touch with your team? Um, can they raise their hand somewhere? Um, or is there information available where they can find more details about it? Yes. Uh, so uh, through this uh, um, foundation that uh, we, you know, uh, will... Uh, tell uh, patients and the physician or families uh, about this uh, clinical trial and so I think uh, we can expand this program and uh, introduce your program to more uh, patients in Japan uh, soon mm -hmm. I think. All right yeah wonderful and so um, the, the, um, the trial is um, uh, meant for about 100 patients if I remember correctly um, but of course there are many more in Japan yes. <clears throat> that might hear about it and they might be interested in trying um, ketogenic um, you know metabolic therapies and maybe keto citra um, but maybe they don't live anywhere near Tokyo um, is there something they can already do um, on their own can they get um, information you know maybe through your the PKD foundation mm -hmm. website that you have uh, where they could just um, um, start something on their own or together with their own doctor um, and is there you know Japanese um, information available for those doctors maybe um, yes. uh, I'm not sure what, what is what is out mm. there or what, what well, plan yes. well in Japan uh, probably we have uh, 30,000 patients in Japan mm. so it's a lot and uh, still um, uh, but uh, the currently that the patient on Trubaptan is, uh, I think, less than 5,000. So still mm -hmm. a lot of patients uh, is, you know, not willing to take uh, Trubaptan or not have the opportunity to take Trubaptan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I think uh, it's a great uh, bless for patients. And also not only in Japan, but other Asian countries, uh, 
aware that uh, many countries still uh, Trivaptan is not approved, uh, not in uh, daily practice. So I think right. this, you know, protocol, this clinical trial, will have, uh, you know, very meaningful to many patients uh, in Asia too. Mm. So, and Asia, right. Asia food is quite similar, you know, among Thai food, Japanese food, Chinese food, Korean mm. food, Vietnamese. It's kind of similarity. Right. So, yeah, I think uh, it's quite easy uh, to uh, introduce uh, this program to uh, mm -hmm. other Asian countries. Wonderful, yeah. And that's really, you know, one of the important parts, I think, of the whole, um, you know, dietary approach is that mm -hmm. it is so accessible worldwide. Um, you yes. don't have to live in a rich country. Um, yes. You know, anyone can can be on a ketogenic mm -hmm. diet, anyone can do 16-8 fasting, mm -hmm. for example, and mm -hmm. um, even keto citra, mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is actually very accessible and, and right. in, inexpensive compared to mm -hmm. drugs. Um, that's excellent. Um, so, um, but I'm wondering, what do doctors in Japan think, you know, nephrologists and urologists, if somebody brings up the topic of ketogenic diets, mm -hmm. um, do they have a similar reaction as many doctors in, in the U.S., where they say, oh, no, you can't do it, um, it's dangerous, or are they more um, educated about it or, or accepting of, of, mm -hmm. uh, of it? I wonder what your experience has been. Well, uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, uh, physicians are quite conservative. Uh, they are meant to be like that. So most of the case, uh, physicians are uh, kind of, how to say, uh, have a sense of uh, resistance to the new ideas, new concept. So, but they will admit, you know, with the scientific uh, evidence. So uh, I think initially that, uh, uh, and also uh, physicians think about that the uh, uh, new drug, uh, which will be released on the clinical trial, so they will accept that very soon. But they may think, uh, in, other, in other words, what is most important is uh, nutrition is not taught in uh, medical education, mm -hmm. which is very strange. Uh, right. But so uh, most of the physician doesn't have, you know, a any any sense of nutrition, so mm -hmm. they don't know. Uh, very well. Right. Physicians are very, um, how to say, uh, not accepting well, but they don't know well. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. so yeah. I, 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 uh, yeah, I expect that uh, in Japan too, uh, some doctors will be could be resisting to the introduction mm -hmm. of these ideas, but uh, but sooner or later uh, they will, you know, uh, understand. And they will learn quickly how important is it, it is. And now, but since uh, you know microbiome is everybody is now interested in microbiome. And in Japan, almost every morning, and many sh variety shows, TV shows uh, deal with uh, microbiome. So wow. uh, <laughs> I think okay. uh, patient is more interested in uh, this. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, dietary intervention uh, rather than physicians, but sooner mm -hmm. or later, I think it's a matter of time. Right. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. <clears throat> Good. And let me just uh, go get back uh, real quick to the, uh, so you mentioned that you founded a, um, mm -hmm. like a patient advocacy yes. organization, sure. you know, similar maybe to the PKD Foundation in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm wondering what, what is sort of the situation or how is ADPKD regarded in, in Japan also by the patients themselves. Um, are there other um, organizations, adv advocacy group, or self help groups, or are patients often more left, you know, by themselves? Um, has there has there been anything organized so far, or is this really like, uh, now one of the first mm. uh, attempts at at, at get, um, getting patients, you know, some help? Uh, mm. and, and communicating with them? Right. Uh, of course, there are, you know, uh, advocacy, you know, patient advocacy group for many diseases, but this is a, a not first, uh, there are uh, some uh, patient advocacy group uh, in Japan, but the size 
has been not very large, and also uh, physicians' commitment is being uh, limited. So uh, we try to uh, invite many uh, nephro mainly nephrologists first. And uh, we'll uh, educate because uh, still ADPKD is uh, it's a um, you know uh, compared to other common disease common kidney disease uh, numbers are small so it's not relatively uh, not well educated so we start educating physicians and also co medicals and also invite patients and also discuss mm -hmm. many issues with patients. And uh, I think, uh, you know, KDGO uh, will uh, issue the new guideline for ADPKD, and mm -hmm. that will help because uh, KDGO's guideline was uh, uh, edited uh, by not only uh, physicians but also including uh, nurses and uh, uh, also patients. So um, I actually, that I... Uh, previously uh, organized a government committee uh, for ADPKD and not only ca for clinical guidelines in Japanese but also clinical uh, guidelines for patients and families. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I think uh, this foundation will uh, uh, make, how to say, uh, patient and families centered. In other words, uh, in Japan, uh, we, uh, I think the what is different from the United States is uh, people in the United States is more independent mm -hmm. and they would like to make a kind of self-help type of organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, many Asian countries uh, or especially Japan uh, uh, tend to rely on uh, authorities. So authorities mm -hmm. helps and we obey kind of style. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I'd like to change the ideas, and uh, uh, in that sense, this nutritional uh, dietary intervention is quite meaningful. For a patient mm -hmm. can involve, patient can think by themselves to, you know, to control their, their diseases. So I think uh, in that sense, um, uh, your uh, protocol is a kind of peace to make it, you know, make it run very fast. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, terrific. Yeah. And um, we'll, we'll put the, a link down to your uh, foundation mm -hmm. in, in the description, so hopefully some people can find it that way. Yes. Um, great. And uh, my last question is, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're thinking about um, PKD treatment mm -hmm. in the next 10 years, you know, 10 years from mm -hmm. now, where do you think, where do you think we will be? How how will yes. PKD be treated? Right. So uh, I think uh, you know Thomas that your you know uh, scientific achievement is that uh, uh, it's it's uh, in other words you know ADPKD is uh, based on uh, genetic changes. Uh, so, but it's not. Uh, be it's not be treated as a one fit or all, uh, you know, uh, ideas, and uh, you can individualize the uh, treatment. So probably, uh, of course, to uh, analyze the genetic condition, not only PKD or other, uh, you know, uh, genes which is responsible for cyst formation. But also, other gene uh, condition uh, will uh, uh, have some uh, impact uh, on the patient condition. And also, uh, like a microbiome, uh, which can have a tremendous impact on uh, our body's condition. Uh, by analyzing microbiome and also to uh, design the good uh, diet, is important uh, to uh, stop the and uh, to prevent the progression of uh, ADPKD disease. So I think um, personalized, kind of personalized approach uh, will be necessary for genetic diseases. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, scientific uh, findings will support that in the next mm -hmm. 10 years. So, and also we hope that the new drug will come out 
uh, to prevent the progression. But unfortunately, probably for the next five years, uh, we don't have a new medicine uh, at this moment. So uh, in that sense, uh, you know, uh, dietary uh, intervention is quite important. So mm -hmm. and always I think uh, science uh, is, or, you know, the progress of medicine comes from uh, more, uh, what to say, uh, different and unexpected angles. Uh, so mm -hmm. your ideas is quite, I think it's very new to most uh, nephrologists and also basic researchers. And mm -hmm. also new, I hope that other new ideas uh, will be brought to the uh, treatment for ADPKD. Mm -hmm. Great, super, mm -hmm. yeah. We definitely have a, a bunch of ideas in, in the pipeline in the lab so um yes. i'll be working on it um yeah. great wonderful um so i would say um, um the last word goes to yeah. you shigio um is there anything we forgot um to talk about or do you have well, any message uh, to patients sure. or any mm -hmm. message to doctors okay uh it's uh you know since i've been interested in uh, fasting i plan to establish a new uh, fasting institute uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, uh, people to get uh, healthy. And uh, mm -hmm. this kind of fasting institute for, uh, you know, uh, people has been uh, very common in Europe and uh, also uh, some in the United States. Uh, but uh, I check almost all famous uh, fasting institutes, but uh, no program uh, supervised supervised with the physicians and also mm. uh, not only physicians but also as kind of with uh, scientific findings uh, so mm -hmm. uh, we did some we're now doing some research uh, what kind of genetic changes occurs when you do fasting and mm -hmm. we found that the fasting can rejuvenate your genes your cells so and I think it's just amazing and also uh, <clears throat> uh, so fasting means it, it's uh, semi almost equal to ketogenic diet so uh, mm -hmm. I think you know people are so interested in now in anti-aging uh, but uh, you don't have to take uh, any you know uh, how to say uh, strange molecule uh, mm -hmm. but you can make yourself, uh, you know, uh, rejuvenate by yourself. So, right. I'm I'm planning to uh, establish institutes in Niseko, Hokkaido, in Japan, which is a very famous mm -hmm. uh, ski resort. In two mm -hmm. years later, and uh, I I'd like to expand uh, this, uh, you know, uh, fasting institute. We name mm -hmm. it Cleanse. Cleanse means, uh, you know, to make it clean. Uh, right. So uh, this institution, uh, maybe uh, many places in Japan, also in, in Asia or other part of the world. So, mm -hmm. wow, that's terrific! Yeah. Yes. So I, I wish you um, wonderful success uh, getting this all up and Thank running. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, so we'll be in touch anyway um, mm -hmm. a lot uh, because of the trial. Um, we're going to yes. start soon. Sure. And um, yeah, I would say, uh, Shigo, thank you so much uh, for this interview. I really enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank have you. a great rest of your day. Yes, right. have a mm -hmm. wonderful weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm.